So I was at um, the team, and we were doing missions, and we were going after some real big bad dudes. And I have a ton of those stories, but I only tell like two of them. But uh, this one story is, is, is important because it's who I am. So we're going to this house, we're doing the clearing, we're walking through and we're doing all the stuff, but we're doing it real quiet because we haven't gone hot yet. So it's all like the cover, you know, shh. We're just going through it, super quiet. And I get up through this room and I get up these stairs and I take it to this right and at the end of this hallway, I didn't know how fast I was going, I was going pretty quick. But we usually were pretty good about that and checking stuff, but for whatever reason, I went through the door and it didn't have the number two, so I was going out there alone. And uh, out on this rooftop, so it was a door that opened out on the rooftop. And you know in Afghanistan, they sleep on the roofs all the time because it's really hot in there and they just want to be out in the cool air and it's the stars, it's beautiful to sleep out there on these rooftops. Plus it's the security points. So this guy was up there on security, pulling security for his family and for the compound. And uh, he had the AK and he's sitting there. And so basically you see me, I um, have all the best equipment. You know, the lasers, the nogs, the night vision, you know, all the stuff, and I'm using some terminology that, but night vision, the lasers, and the gun, and it's totally prepped out my body armor, and we have our radios on the sides of the antennas and all that stuff. So if you look at me with this green glow in there, and there's all this tech, and there's lasers, and all the stuff, I'm like an alien being, you know? I'm looking very high tech and very alien looking. And then I look at this guy, and you know, in, in retrospect, I'm looking at this guy, and he's down here with bare feet and dirty and just raggy hair and his beard, and just his, he had his one, you know, that thing they wear. And I used to know all these things. I used to speak some of the language, but it's kind of washed all that out. But I, I see this guy up there, and he's laying there sleeping. He's just starting to wake up because there's some noise and stuff is starting to happen because even the animals start waking up in the compound, you know. So eventually people start waking. And the guy's just getting up and he sees it and he starts and he's reaching up and he's got his AK. Starts coming off me. But I'm already off safe and I'm figuring it, I'm going. I it was a split second. I mean I set a record in at Shaw's shooting, you know, camp, you know, the, the plate shooting. I'm on that top ten because I'm a fast shooter. And so I'm sitting there just waiting, I'm just there. And uh Dude's getting up and he's swinging up and I'm going, don't, don't. And I'm, going, I'm just looking at him going, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm in my head and I'm just praying. It's like all of it's going, all my energy is going to that guy. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. And it's like such a close. And if he was just like this much further with that barrel and I was just like watching all of it. Why was I doing that? No rules of engagement. I could have taken him right when I walked out on there because he was up there in security and had a gun next to him. Done. But I didn't. I was going towards him. I was still walking towards him, closing the distance. And then the guy just like right there goes and he drops it because he, he saw it. So it's alien versus caveman. And I'm sitting there for about whatever seconds it took me walking towards this caveman as an alien. Different language, different religion, different culture, different everything. Super high tech and this guy with dirt. Why, why was I doing that? For seconds I was walking towards this guy. Didn't shoot. I could have. I was allowed to. Should have. I actually got in trouble because there was guys on other rooftops and there was other stuff going on in the compound. And one guy, and I can't remember um, who it was, I could if I really thought about it. But he saw what was going on on my rooftop. He saw a cross because it was only maybe as wide as this room. It's not huge distances. So he saw what was going on over there. He saw it. And when we got done with the whole thing and the guy was cuffed, because basically he dropped a gun and I, and I kicked it away and I cuffed him up against the wall. And because I did all the bit, I did all the interrogations. So, because I was an ASOT type guy and I did all that stuff. So, I was also the interrogator. So, I'm talking to this guy through my turp. And because I was like that agency ASOT guy, I always had a turp. Because I was always doing this stuff. So, he's my turp. And uh, so, interpreter. So, he was the guy that did all the local posture. And I just spoke some of it, but not all of it. He, um, I don't even speak very much at all. So, team guy, you know. Mm -hmm. you know and hands up and where's the bomb and this stupid stuff. But, um... I was talking to him and he just seemed like a pretty good dude. This is after all the action, after everything was done and everything's So I'm just talking to him and I'm getting intel and I'm trying to work with him. And uh, he didn't know anything. And the guy was like, he was not anybody we'd ever want. And I was like, just leave this guy. And then one of the other guys was like, no, we should take him, you know, and get one. He got a guy and he had a gun, he was security. I was like, no, man, I was going to leave this dude. And so because I was had enough voice over it, because I was the interrogator, and I was the guy doing all this stuff, but I was also the guy that ran source operations. So I was the field officer, you know? I was a recruiter, you know? And so I told them we need to leave this guy, and they did. And so we took off, and, and I, you know, it was good, done. 
You spared his life. Spared his life. But it was seconds of me walking up on him. Two weeks later, I'm walking through a bazaar. And if you've ever seen pictures of me, I have this big, bright red beard, if, unless I dye it. And over there, I dyed it a lot because I had to get it darker. But if you see me, I had a really red beard. And he used to call me Red Beard or Caveman. So it was always something about that. So two weeks later, three weeks later, it was a little while later, I'm walking through a bazaar, and uh, I got this guy running towards me, and he's saying something in posh to you. And so I start drawing my pistol, because I had my long gun in the, in the truck. And so I start drawing my pistol out, because we're in a bazaar where it's like, it's not a big deal. So, and it was right there on the base. It was one of the bazaars kind of attached to the base. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so it was protected and there was guys all over and we had security towers like right there. So we just brought pistols in there. We just wanted to be, you know. And uh, so I start reaching in and getting my pistol out and Turk puts my hand down and says, no, no, he's saying thank you. It's like, and I was like, and me and him have been working for a long time and I had super trust. And it's the dude, it's the guy. And he sees me and he's saying thank you and he hugs me. He says, come back to my shop. And, and so I go back to his shop start talking to him, and we become friends, you know, and I get a really great discount on a rug, you know, because he had his really cool shop. That's a good story, huh? Damn. Yeah, that's not the whole story. It was the I guy? Have, it was the guy. And so what do you think I did with that guy? So it became this amazing thing who I actually gave him over to uh, uh, another agency. But it was amazing. You and so we're talking him. to the guy. Yeah. So I'm talking to the guy, and it's amazing and good stuff. And because the guy was very aware because he ran that business, he was always there. He was always traveling around, saw a lot of stuff. So um, amazing. And uh, we became friends. And so the point of the story is not all that, the fact that he became a friend or he ended up being good for us. But the conversations I had with him was about, I, wanted, I don't want to be here. And I know that y'all don't want us to be here. So what can we do to get all these foreigners out? And you know, if you've been in Afghanistan, it wasn't really the Afghanis that were doing most of the trouble, you know? It was everybody else. It was all these jihadists coming in there and trying to kill Americans. Yeah. Just like when I was in Iraq, I got shot by more Iranians in the beginning than I did Iraqis. They were shooting at us all the time because they were paying money to go on the border right there with the fence and shooting across uh, the Shat al Arab and trying to get us across the, sh across the river. The Tigers, Euphrates, and they come down, and then you have that one strip. Well, the Iranians were shooting across at us and all the time. And, uh, but we weren't allowed to talk about that. But they're a jihadist and they just want to kill Americans. You know? it's, a, it's a bonus for them. They get bonuses, I guess, when they go to heaven or something, which is ridiculous. You know, it's an Abrahamic religion. You know? We're also part of the Abrahamic religions. Why can't we all get along or something like that? But the whole point of the story is the fact that I, I didn't shoot right away. And the guy was, yeah, I was in trouble. They were like, why did you do that? You brought us all in danger. And I was like, no, it was right there. I mean, I was a controlled situation. It's not a big deal. And plus, now I met this dude, and he's a really good guy, and we're getting good intel off it. But the point of the story is about here in America. You walk around America, and everybody's fighting. Everybody's talking about phobias. Everybody's calling everybody Nazis. Everybody's, it's all this huge fight. You walk around the street, and you're lucky if you don't get beat up if you're late at night, and you're white or black or Asian or this or that. If you're different, if you're an other, and Courtney brought this up, if you get the term othered put on to you, you're going to get it because that label is that dangerous label. And that's America right now. And so every time I talk, when I give these speeches out in front of these huge groups of people, and I do that, you know, like five to ten big speeches a year, which is pretty good for me because I'm just living off my disability and stuff, you know. So if I can give a speech and I can make a little money off it, it's a pretty good deal. And I give leadership stuff and I do motivation stuff. But this is one of the stuff that I talk about. Is the fact that in America, we're all walking around, we never give anybody a chance. I said, I'm walking in there as an alien and a caveman on the ground with no nothing. I gave him three seconds. I said, we don't do that for each other. Automatically, if you saw me as a transgender person, and you would just want to fight me, or you want to do something. And I had team guys start trying to pick fights with me and doing a lot of stuff. And it was just like, I didn't do anything. Well, I actually did do something with all that, and I feel bad about that. But we do that for everybody for black and white, for Asian, for Latino, for all of it, we're all fighting. We never give each other even three seconds to have a conversation or just look at you and say, hey, you're a human being. You know, I'm not gonna walk up to you like this and just start punching you in the face. Yeah. How about you give me three seconds? And so I ask everybody out there, I say, you'll never on, on anywhere around the world, mostly, very rarely will you ever see, you know, somebody as far apart as that alien in that caveman on that rooftop. I gave him three seconds. So why can't you do the same? You know, just give everybody you meet three seconds. How about you start with a smile instead of a grimace? Here's this one rapper that said his whole life changed 
when all he did was just change his eyebrows. I can't remember who it was, but he was always like that, and always like trying to be that tough guy, just always like, and you do it, you're perfectly squint like that, and I can look really mean, and I can go up to you, and I can mad dog you. And most of those rappers are all doing that mad dog stuff. He's all he did was lift his eyebrows, and he did that, and everybody changed. Everybody started talking to him differently, and he started treating everybody differently, and his whole life changed. And I ask everybody out there, three seconds, you know, I was able to do it in the most critical, like, whack, life and death situations. Yeah. You know, and it's not a big thing to ask. Is that we all start smiling a little bit, just like that guy did, and changed his life, just lifted his eyebrows a little bit, and started being, how about a smile? How about open your hands up out of them fists and talking to each other? Now, how you see transgender people right now is the way I hope a lot of other people start seeing them. There's just a lot of folks out there that are hurting. And the thing is, is every time you are scowl or you... Um, talk to a transgender person because they're looking just whack or whatever's going on. And you make fun of them, do anything like that. What you're doing is you're pushing, you're punching them. And then as soon as they get punched, they're going to sit there and they're going to talk to their trans community and their, the whole community, and they get hugely love bombed. And all it does is just make the gap wider. So every time you're all out there in public, you aren't smiling with those transgender people, just give them a break. You know, they don't need to be beat up. They're beating themselves up enough. You don't need to beat them up. They're getting beat up by everybody else. So if you can do it, if you're a human, and you have just the slightest bit of compassion, how about you start being a little nicer? How about you give that person a break and start trying to close that gap up a little bit? How about if you're black or white, you give it a break and start closing that gap up a little bit? If you're Latino or Asian or whatever, how about you give it all a break? We're not all racist. Most of us aren't. Most of us are poor, and most of us are rich, and that's the division. It's not, and nothing about race, and nothing about religion, or nothing about gender, nothing about any of that. The only enemies right now is rich and poor. You know, and always been that way. We're the slaves to them, and it's all we are. And so if we start looking at each other and start saying, hey, we're the same. <laughs> hey, dude, you're, you're good. You're a good dude. I've talked to you now for three seconds. All right? And we shake hands. And it's black and white. Or man and woman. Or gay and straight. Or trans and not trans. And whatever. When you start closing those gaps up, because we don't shoot, and we give them a few seconds, we might start finding out that America is a pretty cool place. Yeah. But right now it's a cesspool. Right now it's all fights. And CNN's doing it. And Fox is doing it. And all we're doing is fighting. And we gotta stop that. You gotta start offering your hand out. When you see that transgender person in that, in that grocery store, just leave them alone. You don't need to make fun of them. They already get enough of that. They get enough of that in a mirror. So please, all I say, if you listen to this whole thing and you make it here to the end, just, would you chill out a little bit? Would you start being a little friendlier to people? I don't hate anybody. I want everybody to do well, you know? And I want everybody to find happiness. I want everybody to find love. I did. I found love and happiness. And I give everybody at least three seconds, all the time, no matter what. No matter how they're coming at me, until they're like right there and I start feeling some danger, still trying to give them some time, you know? And I just, I plead with our country right now. We're at the precipice right now of a civil war. And you know it, and I know it, and a lot of people know it. We're at the precipice right now. But we don't have to fall over. We don't have to go there. We don't have to have another civil war. But we're gonna, if we keep going in this direction. And I beg of you, give everybody three seconds. That's all I ask. You're a good fucking human being, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.